right. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajeem. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. As-salatu wa salamu ala muhammadin wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm going to continue with ayah 101. And then I will summarize Surah Al-Isra. And we will go on to Surah Al-Hadid, inshallah. So this is where we stop. This is section 9. And here Allah says, وَلَقَدْ أَعْتَيْنَا مُوسَى And we gave Musa this ayatim bayinat, nine clear signs. Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute because Musa had many signs. For example, um, the, the gushing of the water from the stones, the splitting of the sea, the manna and salwa. These are all signs, but these nine are particular to Fir'aun. So the nine were the staff turning into a serpent. There was the hand that became a bright white light. There was the drought in Egypt, which led to a shortage of food. There was the widespread deaths. There was the flood, the locusts, the lice, the frogs, the Nile becoming a river of blood and the drowning of Fir'aun. So these, these are the nine, uh, or rather Nile becoming a river of blood is the ninth one. But these are the nine signs that actually deal only with Fir'aun. That's why there's this, uh, otherwise there were loads of other signs. So now Allah is saying, first Albani Israel, ask the children of Israel, Id ja'ahum, when he came to them, Faqala, Fir'aun said, Faqala lahu Fir'aun, um, and Fir'aun said to him, Inni la'adhunnuka ya Musa maskura. Musa, I see in you, you are a victim of magic. Maskur, it's like masjid. Masjid is some place you do sajda. Maskur, a place where magic is done upon. In other words, he's telling him, you are afflicted with magic. You have been, you know, you're sick. That's what, that's what Fir'aun is telling Musa. So he's, in his mind, he's made it up, he's convinced himself that this is all magic. All that's been done is magic because he lived in, a, in an era of magic. So he doesn't see this as divine at all. Look what Musa says. Musa says, you know what? It's this is nothing but from the rub of the heavens of the earth. And he sent this as clear proof. And then he's saying, look what he's saying to Fir'aun. He's telling him, Inni la mathmura. Indeed, Fir'aun, I see you as afflicted with death. Thubur is death, is to annihilate, to finish. So where, maybe I should not say death, Thubur is something terminal, leading to death. In the previous one, he said, Inni la'udhunnuka ya Musa masfura. Here he says, Inni la'udhunnuka ya Fir'auna masfura. One is saying you're afflicted with magic. One is saying you're afflicted with a terminal illness because you are not recognizing that this is divine. Now Fir'aun is scared because inside him, he recognizes the truth. He recognizes this is not magic. This is beyond magic. So what he wants to do is he just wants to annihilate anybody who's telling him the truth. And human beings have a tendency. We all have a tendency to do that. It's very scary. So look what he does. For Arada, he wished. Now remember we did fazza, not able to stand on your feet, to, to intimidate someone, to make them shaky when they're firm. So he desired to unhinge them, make them unsteady, take away their confidence in the earth. But Allah says, We drowned him and those with him all together. So now he's gone. And we said to him, we said to him after, or we said to the Bani Israel after that, stay in the earth, settle in the land. And Allah is telling them that we will, when the final promise arrives as such, we will bring all your people together. Lafif are interrelated large groups. And you will find even today, the Bani Israel have grouped together. Now I'm not going to go, there's a lot of predictions, lots of things that happen, but here Allah is saying, settle in this land and we'll put you all together. There are loads of theories for this. So maybe one day we will look at them or you can read about them too. 
and with truth have you revealed it. And this is talking about the Quran. And with truth did it came. So it was revealed as truth, it came with truth, and it's telling the pro prophet there is a purpose for it, but you have been sent down as one who gives good news and as a warner. So the commandment is there to tell us that there is a purpose in this book. There is something, it's not just there to be read and read and read. So now we've come to section nine, which is Prophet Musa and the Bani Israel. Um, let's go to the next section or the last section, sorry, it's section 10. Let's go to section 11 and have a look at the attributes of Allah. Okay, now, like I said, I'll put it all together. In fact, maybe I shall go over it now before we go into the last section. So we've got it right. So we started off with looking at Isra. Let me, let me go back to the buildings. We started off with Isra. So Isra is consolation and elevation. The closer we get to divinity, the closer you get to divinity, the more he shows you. And like um, we were talking about just now, uh, Salah is Isra as well, because you're getting close to Allah. The second section tells you about the Bani Israel, their elevation and downfall. So now it's coming to human level, as into our level. The prophet is human, but he's, he's, he's a different category, the most awesome man who walked the earth. Here it's telling us that in the Bani Israel, their elevation was always when they heard the prophets or when they followed the prophets, and their downfall was when they, disobe they were disobedient. Then it tells me why these downfall happens. So these downfalls happen because the human being prays for evil like it's good. The human being doesn't link his or her deeds to the hereafter. And finally, the human being is inherently selfish. And that is why there is a downfall. So how do I start? So as a human being, as a, as a person, I would say, well, I want to start somewhere. So he, start, he says, start with the basic, basic 10 commandments. And these are the basic 10 Quranic commandments. What happens if I don't follow? If I don't follow those basic commandments, then he says, I will put a barrier between divine guidance and yourself. The other consequence is that you will become hard hearted. The third consequence is that your words will create friction. And the fourth consequence or the fourth reason is because you don't believe you're being watched 360 degrees. Then he gives me an example and he says why it's because of arrogance and arrogance is because as a result of rebellion and he gives me the example of shaitan then he talks about are you safe so you're feeling arrogant you're feeling you've got it all so he's saying are you safe land or sea are you safe now we don't even need anything this year but the pandemic it's taught us how unsafe we are. So he's saying, I am the only protector. Maybe that's the pandemic's greatest lesson. He says, you'll be raised with that which you followed. So how do I get close to him? So I'm saying, all right, I need you as my protector. I want to get close to you. So he says, if you want to get close to me, Salah, Tahajjud, and Quran. It's as, it's as simple as that. Connect with me, pray your Tahajjud, and follow the Quran. Don't be ludicrous as the Quraysh did, because they said, we will only believe if. So he says, don't do that. Don't, don't put your, 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 um, your thinking on me as to I will only believe if I see a miracle, because you've got miracles all around you. Section 10, which we looked at now, tells me even if we showed you miracles, even if we showed you these ludicrous miracles that the Quraysh asked, look what we did to, to um, Fir'aun. We showed him miracles, but he did, he did not believe them at all. So now we come to section 11, which is what I would like to say, ultimate success. And how does ultimate success come? Um, what do I do? So the first one, what Quran? So the first thing he says is, let me tell you about this Quran. What Quranan faraknahu litaqrahu ala nas. And it is a Quran which we have revealed in portion, ala muqthin. Muqthin is, is, to wait and recite slowly. When nazalnahu tanzila and nazalnahu tanzila is that it's been revealed in bits, in a little bit at a time. Remember when we talked about, I don't know whether you, I, I think when we did Prophet Musa on a Thursday, he tells his, um, he tells his fan, family, umkuth inni anatunaran, wait here, wait here where, where I've told you to wait because I have seen some, some fire. So he's saying, read, 
wait slowly. It's revealed in appropriate occasions. It's remember the Quraysh always said, why isn't this book revealed all at once? Why is it revealed in bits? So here Allah is saying, take it a bit at a time, understand it a bit at a time. Don't just read and read and read and read. And then he says, Qul, believe in it or do not believe in it. It's up to you. Qul aminu bihi aw la tu'minu. Inna ladina utul ilm, those who have been given knowledge, min kablihi from before, and this is talking about the people of the book historically, idha yutla alayhim, when it is read to them, idha yutla alayhim, yakhiruna lil adhkani sujjadan. They, now this is an expression. Azgan is your chins. They fall down on their chins in sajda, and this is a this is a mustahab sajda. In other words, they lose control. They are overwhelmed by the power of the message of the Quran. You only have to hear it. It was like the jinn when we did Surah Al Jinn. It's like the jinn. They only had to hear it to know this was divine, and this wasn't somebody somebody from the earth who said that. And they say, and this is the people of the book, because it talks about people from before, وَيَقُولُونَ Immediately they say, سُبْحَانَ رَبِّنَا إِنْ كَانَ وَعَدُ رَبِّنَا مَفْعُولَ Our Rabb is perfect. And the promise of my Rabb will be fulfilled. This is talking about the Ahlul Kitab who heard the revelation. It's telling you and me, when you and I hear this revelation, is that what it does to me? So there's some simple rules that we can apply to this. When we... Um, when we read a du'a in the Quran, then to be able to raise our hands. When we read a, a, a ayah of Jannah, to say, Ya Allah, make me amongst them. When we read an ayah of Jahannam, Jahannam, Ya Allah, I do not want to be part of them. That is simple response to the Quran. And then we'll continue and do other bits as we go along. So this is what they say. And then again, وَيُخِرُونَ adkan. They're just so overwhelmed. They fall over. You see, when you fall with control you manage your fall with your hands but when you faint or fall without control you just go straight down so this is saying that totally overwhelmed by it what do they do yabquna they weep because they've seen the truth in it and this revelation increases their awe of allah so must have such that sorry this is the one that's there now, this is what you, we need to do. So how do I attain ultimate success? Call upon Allah or call upon the Rahman. And the, the attribute that's used is Rahman. Ayyaman tad'u, whichever you call upon. Falahul asma ul husna. He has the best of names. So here when it says call upon, means can you call upon it within your soul? The Prophet said, um, Adopt in yourself the akhlaq of Allah. So to adopt in myself the asma al husna, to be able to understand so that when somebody were to see me, whether it is whether it is closed circle or outside, they would be, besides the humanness, be able to see a sense of godliness. And I don't mean becoming a deity. What I'm trying to say is being able to manifest those qualities of Allah. And then he says, When you are connecting to him, not with a very raised voice, not even a low voice, find the way in between. Don't be overly loud, don't be overly soft. Um, be in between. And finally, and say, Alhamdulillah. And it's amazing because the next surah starts with Alhamdulillah. So, say Alhamdulillah. Lam walada, wa lam yakun lahu he who has not taken a, a, a son and does not have a partner in his kingdom. Wa lam yakun lahu min and there is no wali, there is no friend to assist him. There is no weakness, there is no, um, if I can say, there, there, is no, uh, there is no humiliation for him. Wa and magnify his greatness, Allahu Akbar. Now this whole thing is Tasbihat Arba, because we started off the surah with Subhan, and we're ending with, so there's four things. You had Subhanallah in the beginning, that means the surah started with Subhan. You have Alhamd here, the middle bit, Lam yattakhid waladam wa lam yakul lahu sharikun fil mulk, is la ilaha illallah, and wa kabbirhu takbira is Allahu Akbar. So in essence, the whole of Suratul Isra 
if you were to summarize it, it is thus we had the Araba. Subhanallahi, walhamdulillahi, wala ilaha illallahu, wallahu akbar. And very, very quickly, I will go over it quickly as a story again. So I'm, I'm now going to paraphrase it and make it our own. So we've got 11 sections. Number one, the closer you get to him, the more you get to see his secrets, the more you are able to be godlike in inverted brackets. When I say godlike, you're able to manifest those attributes, especially Rahmaniyat. But Israel, their elevation was only when they followed the prophets. When they didn't, there was a downfall. So it's a historical lesson. When we don't follow divine guidance, there's a downfall. Third, why is there a downfall? Because we pray for evil like it's good. We don't attach our deeds to the hereafter and we're inherently selfish. How do I start? Follow the Ten Commandments that the Quran has stated. If I don't follow those Ten Commandments, then I will find there is a barrier between divine guidance and me. I will not be able to connect to the Quran. My words will create friction and I will become hard hearted. And this is because of the arrogance in me, which says, I know it all. Remember, we said hijab and mastura. There will be a barrier because I, I have not approached divine guidance with intellectual humility. And this arrogance is because of rebellion. And the rebellion is there, which says, I know it all, I'm better than you and then he says okay say you're you think you're better than everyone you think you're everything are you safe in the land or the sea are you safe and i mentioned the pandemic um so how do i get close to you Allah? he says start your salah start quran and start the hajjah the Quraysh said well we want miracles we want you we want these things you you need to tell us you know ludicrous stuff and it didn't he said that's not going to work and we found in Fir'aun that miracles do not convince. And finally, your ultimate success. The ultimate success is to be able to establish within ourselves God-like attributes and to be able to understand the concept of subhanallahi, walhamdulillahi, wa la ilaha illallahu, wallahu akbar.